It's been 30 years since The Lion King came out. Either that information will astonish you or depress you. For where has the time gone? We all know that this movie was a huge success. Being the most successful Disney soundtrack of all time, it spun off to the stage, where it sits as the highest grossing Broadway play of all time. Despite all those astonishing achievements, some still don't know the story of who contributed to the music. So let's figure it out. Most of the people I talk to say that the music was written by Elton John or Hans Zimmer. And although both of those answers are correct, there's a little more to it than that. Our story begins with another person, Tim Rice, most known for his brilliant lyrics in musicals like Avita, Jesus Christ Superstar, Chess, and Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Fresh off of helping Alan Menken finish the music of Aladdin, where he and Menken created the beautiful song A Whole New World, which resulted in an Oscar, Golden Globe, and Grammy. After Aladdin, Disney had two films in the works, Pocahontas, which Alan Menken and Steven Schwartz went on to work on, leaving Rice to work on a new project with an original story, and at the time was a very risky endeavor for Disney. The company's previous success was built on modifying existing work. This project was either going to be a raging success or a colossal failure. Despite the risk, Tim Rice was on board to be the lyricist. A lyricist's job is to write the lyrics of a song. So technically without the instruments, wouldn't it just be a poem then? Whatever. The point is, Rice needed to partner up with someone who could create the music behind his words. And when Disney asked who he'd like to team up with, Rice jokingly said Elton John. The two collaborated once before on the song Legal Boys on Elton's Jump album. Now, Rice didn't believe that this was going to come to fruition because he believed that Elton John was too high profile and too busy to work on such a project. But after Rice called called him up, he agreed. I was intrigued. The songs had to tell a story. The plan was that we wouldn't write the usual Broadway-style Disney score, but try to come up with pop songs that kids would like. And they succeeded in doing so. Kind of. <laughs> in the lyric department, Rice created simplistic lyrics that were easy for all ages to understand. Add in the fact that some of these songs are some of the most earworm-inducing songs known to man. Believe me, they've been rattling in my skull for the past week. I mean, it could be worse. I could have a song like Baby Shark stuck in my head. Baby shark, doo -doo 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 -doo. Dang it! I'm gonna be stuck in my head for friggin' weeks now. Now, composing was a different story. What is Elton John most known for? I'll give you a hint if you don't know. Here's another one. And here's the final clue. The answer to this is a unique guy singing as he plays the piano. And that may be a proven way to get a lot of fans, but it probably won't appeal to children. Plus, the piano alone doesn't really fit into the whole, like, jungle vibes. Now, I'm not trying to hate on Elton John, he does good work. If you listen to Elton's versions of each song, he has the right musical construction, but the arrangement aligns more with a pop album than the story of Hamlet told by Big Cats. And they don't don't add to the overall sense of atmosphere the film was trying to create. In a Disney musical, or literally in any musical, the musical tone is crucial in submerging you into the world. You need to feel like you're sitting in Pride Rock with a bunch of antelopes around you, or the elephant graveyard and be prepared. Elton's poppy sound just wasn't cutting it. I mean, it didn't really work for Tarzan in my opinion. I do thoroughly enjoy Phil Collins' music, but his pop songs didn't really make me feel like I was in a jungle surrounded by gorillas. Or as Clayton says, gorillas. but to each their own, I guess. So Hans Zimmer came in as the arranger of the music. What's the difference between a composer and an arranger? A composer is someone who creates new music from scratch. An arranger takes the existing song and modifies it. This is just me kind of thinking out loud here. Does that mean that Alan Minkin is an arranger of his own work while working on the Disney remakes? And do those remake songs infringe on copyright laws? And also, why is the instrumental of these songs so loud compared to the singing? Uh, 
I don't know. Someone please explain. I'm sorry, this was very off topic. But if you know any of the answers to these questions, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> and if this doesn't pertain to you, then comment what your favorite Lion King song is. I'll be prepared to hear from you. Zimmer's job was to take Elton's work and fix it so it sounded more like an African safari. Now the question became, how would Sir Elton John react to having his musical creation picked apart piece by piece, all that time and effort ripped to smithereens. He was actually pretty okay with it. <laughs> I was worried that he would hate me for what I did to his songs. It gets personal and I really took that stuff apart, but he's still speaking to me and that's a good sign. Zimmer might have edited the music to work in tandem with the animated feature, but he didn't erase the rhythm that is undeniably Elton John's. With the addition of Zimmer, it made the music more jungle-like, but also more kid-friendly. Can I explain my rationale on that notion? No. No, I cannot. All I know is that Elton John, Tim Rice, and Hans Zimmer accomplished what they set out to do by making pop music for little kiddos. Here's where things get a little confusing, so bear with me. Elton John composed the music for the songs you and I sing along to. The Circle of Life, I Just Can't Wait to Be King, yada yada yada. With those songs, that's Tim Rice's lyrics, Elton's music, and Hans Zimmer arranging said music. The thematic score or the instrumental music, like when Nala and Simba anxiously try to escape the hyenas, isn't crafted by Elton John. Those songs were composed by Hans Zimmer. I know, it's a little confusing. So to answer the question, who composed the music of The Lion King is both Elton John and Hans Zimmer. Now, this is also why Hans Zimmer did not win an Academy Award with Tim Rice and Elton John for Best Original Song in 1995 for Can You Feel the Love Tonight? And by the way, can we just talk about this song for a second? It, it feels like it's a little obvious that like Simba and Nala are related in some way. Scar and Mufasa are the only male lions and their brothers, so like if you connect the dots, it makes things a little awkward. Add in the deleted scene of the reprise of Be Prepared where Scar flirts with Nala, which mind you, is still in the Broadway show under the song title The Madness of King Scar. Ugh. Dude, that's not cool. I'm so sorry if I ruined your childhood, so let's just, let's just move on. Although Zimmer did not win an Oscar for Best Original Song, he did win his first Academy Award for The Lion King's musical score. This award-winning trio did not stop there. They later created the music for The Road to El Dorado, which is kind of funny because I watched it the other week and was like, huh, this kind of sounds like Elton John's music, blissfully unaware that it was his music the whole entire time. I'm so sorry, I needed something to cleanse my palate from Baby Shark. Now, the final piece of the puzzle came with Lee Boehm, a vocalist who created the iconic chant in the opening of the movie. You know, the one that we botch when we try to sing along at the top of our lungs. <laughs> Yep, that's the one. The powerful opening verse to the Circle of Life. This verse is spoken in Zulu, which is the most widely spoken language in South Africa. The opening lyrics translate roughly in English, here comes a lion father. I'm so sorry, I should have presented those words with more conviction and zest, like the original, but alas, I don't think I can. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to see the whole English translation to the opening, here it is. You can pause the video right now and read them if you want. The significance of these lyrics parallel with what was happening in South Africa at the time. There was a great deal of hope for Nelson Mandela to become the first black president of South Africa. For Lee Boehm, Mufasa was a symbol of Mandela taking charge. As for Akuna Matata, it's a Swahili phrase that does indeed mean no worries. And it is such a wonderful phrase. Now you know the history, or at least some of the breakdown of what made The Lion King's music so iconic. Bringing in a pop star like Elton John, a legendary lyricist like Tim Rice, a brilliant composer slash arranger in Hans Zimmer, and sprinkling in the work of Lee Boehm. You get a wonderful masterclass in music that is both moving while watching and catchy enough to jam out in your car.
Well, that is all I gotta say about that. What are your thoughts on The Lion King's music? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you kind of meh about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to know all there is to know about Alan Minken and Steven Schwartz creating the music for Pocahontas, then look no further than this video right over here. I guess I'll see you when I see you next. Okay, bye.